and everyone's muted and I'm really just the worst person ever. No one's ready for this, but we are back once again. And I had actually a chocolate raspberry flavored coffee. I didn't think that would be good. I bought it on impulse. Money well spent, it turns out. But that's not the point. We're here for another episode of, I almost called it Rogues Gallery because that was the working title for me as I was putting this together. A simple job, our Pathfinder playtest, all rogue. No sneaky text world yet, but we're getting there. The adventure, as always, Jason, Josh, and Ross, who has returned long last. Yo. Thank you guys so much for your support on Patreon. Levi, thank you for helping me build the Kineticist for a min-maxing video that's coming out soon. Yeah. I'm not GMing, so I have no further need to rent my mouth. I'm just going to, you know, pass it on over to the man himself, Jason, who you actually can see this coming Saturday on our very first episode of Wrath of the Righteous 2 to 5 Central. Take it away, bud. Hopefully that works out. Uh, That's the spirit. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, since, okay. Uh, we are going to start off by adding uh, Mac, your character. Sorry, my brain's gone wild. Uh, so tell us about your character. Give me the well, quick blurb. All right, then. Well, my name is Zurich. I've lived in Osterloh for most of my life. Most rights up in the mountains and the bits up north, but with the world wound and all that sort of nasty business, I'm trying my best to get down south. I'm a bit of what you call a cutthroat, iron blade, thug. Yeah, I've been called a lot of things. Most of the time it's in between the gurgles when I'm putting people down. But either way, that's not here nor there. What is here nor there is just getting paid, moving on, and just trying to figure out what the hell I'm going to do in this life, because Lord knows, well, <laughs> the gods and all their infinite wisdom certainly know what this place is. Going to hell in a handbasket. Excellent. And okay. I, for one, am very happy that if you Google like half work rogue art, you'll everyone's probably seen it at some point. The art I'm using for his token, the half work smoking a pipe, leaning up against like the bazaar with the cat going through his legs. I've always seen that art, but like it's so good. And then we have a half work rogue, so we did it. Okay, so starting with you, I will bring you back up to speed. Uh, first and foremost, there is the, okay, uh, here's what has happened to you of late. Oh boy. You were hired for a job. A caravan sat out from Caliphus, the, uh, capital of Ustalov heading towards Vigil, the capital of Lastwall, which is the nation directly to its west. Well, you were hired with other people to ambush this caravan. Your, whenever, that was probably most of what you had heard of it. It was just a, hey, we need to stop this caravan and steal everything there. Uh, it was mentioned specifically that there should be a very fancy chest and whoever got that got extra. <laughs> uh, and well, my look, I'm the only one that can actually lift it. Well, uh, as everyone charges down to meet them on the bank of the river, uh, the first thing y'all recognize is, well, when you were together with a group, lots of these guys make you feel uncomfortable. We're not, you're not talking just hired thugs or mercenaries. You're talking some guys who are just out and out psychopaths. It, it's, they're not in it for the job, they're in it for the ability to kill people in large numbers. And as y'all pop out in charge, 
uh, you realize that the caravan is, has at least one detachment of the Knights of Orzum, who are one of the crusading factions out of Last Wall. Yes, the mm. people who who keep the world wound in check. Uh, and long and short of it is, uh, when you are finally clubbed into unconsciousness, uh, you know that that attack has failed. I mean, to be fair, I probably didn't work very hard in order to keep it going. I'll probably, once I recognized it was a failing fault in the fact that, well, I'm dealing with, you know, paladins in the lock that are used to fighting demons. Um, hell, yeah, pardon me, just enjoy the show. Yes, the group that swept down and caught your forces together in a pincer. Well, you got a good bonk on top of the head, and that's kind of where your memory lies at the moment. And now everyone, suddenly, uh, y'all, the rest of the party, you've spent the next two days heading up north. So that puts us at right about day eight, I believe. That is correct. Uh, and y'all are ready to here you have a choice. Uh, you're going to make Hyannis by the end of the day. There are two routes. You can either take the river itself and then a smaller overland journey or get off the uh, off the barge heading north a little bit earlier and come in from the eastern side of town. It's going to take about the same difference either way. Mm -hmm. Thank you, someone, for getting a text message. <laughs> now, as all of us have, you know, bad memories of visits to the dentist. <laughs> oh. uh, anyone? Um. Do you want to follow the river longer? Or it's going, going to be the rest of the way. Yeah. The overland travel will be easier if you get off the boat faster to get to Hyannis, but it's you know, you have a longer trip through easier terrain or a shorter trek through rougher terrain. I think the shorter one should definitely be the option, given that in twenty two days we're dead. Yeah. But they're going to take roughly the same amount of time. Oh. oh. Okay. Either way, you should reach Hyannis by nightfallish. By nightfall. Okay. Might as well stay on the boat then. Unless either one of you two have any uh, particular beliefs on the matter. Hmm. I mean, nothing in specific. Uh, boat is nicer. Less yeah. effort. It is definitely easier. Yeah, I vote boat. What about you, Josh? Boat. Boat. Josh boat. is falling asleep at the wheel. <laughs> Awaken, Josh. The time has come. <laughs> okay. So y'all take the boat in to Hyannis. Uh, it's a little bit rough going from where you have to leave the river up into Hyannis. Uh, it's not quite enough to make you fatigued since you have a beast to bear your burdens, but uh, it's not the easiest of travel. So you are there, call it 
an hour before uh, an hour before uh, last light. Uh, anything y'all are looking to to do? Uh, I will. I'm gonna make a quick society check. Yeah. You know? Well, let me see what I don't know about this place. What have I heard about? I'm pressing up as if I can grab it. What have I heard about Hyannis? Starting off with a 12. We did it. Uh, well, given that you've been here, uh, about all you know about it is uh, it's known for nearby coal mines. And as okay. you come into town, you kind of have that pall of coal smoke over mm -hmm. the town. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize that Paizo had put Silent Hill in Ustalov, but I appreciate it. Okay. I mean, it's fitting. It definitely is. <laughs> Neat. Um, I'd actually, you know, uh, on our way around, I'd like to roll a uh, lore underworld and out of curiosity for what illicit activity happens in these areas. Yeah, same. Go, Lord Check 23. Where's all that illegal coal trade? Illegal canary... Can yeah, we can't even speak. Illegal canary trade. Where'd my go? Is it sad that I'm rapidly yeah. scrolling through uh, one of the source some of the source material okay <laughs> that's understandable uh what goes along in here uh okay uh yes there is some there's some smuggling it being a river-based town. Uh, but most of the underworld stuff, criminal stuff, is you know, relatively minor. It's more along the lines of uh, robbery, illegal gambling, illegal prostitution, although, you know, there are the official and then there's the unlicensed of all of these things so it's not it's not at all think of your old west mining town basically okay that's a little just a little bit nicer okay it's uh and So, nothing I'm super interested in. Yeah, especially given the whole like immediate threat of head exploding. I don't necessarily want to get too crazy because anything too crazy involves the whole party going somewhere or lugging the crate around. So, so would I be correct in assuming y'all are gonna grab an inn for the night? Um. I'd say that's probably a fair statement. This is this is where the river ends, right? Uh, effectively for you, yes. It goes a little bit further. Uh, hmm. I, I'll say the you could go maybe ten more miles upriver, but that's going to put you into harder terrain than the uh, path charted for you on the map. OK, that makes sense. So uh, basically, part of the reason you're getting out here at Hyannis is, one, it's about time for, the, for darkness. And two, uh, it puts you on a little bit easier track with the pass through the mountains. OK, fair. Yeah, sounds like an inn would be definitely the way to go. I definitely. As we get to the inn, I just, my friends, I believe we should 
bring the and like not like kick i have to word that carefully as i archetyped monk but like nudge the the giant chest we're carrying i believe we should bring our baggage upstairs with us the last thing we need is for someone to make off with it in the night and well we all wake up on our way to see for asthma That, that seems reasonable. To betwixt the three of us, wherever we're staying, just like lug it up to our room. Yeah. Soon we will have a half orc to carry this box for us. I mean, <laughs> that's meta gaming. Boy, don't don't go assuming now. Mm, okay, darn. <laughs> Assumptions make an ass out of all of us. Make an ass out of you and me. Exactly. <laughs> Of course, there's always that old adage, just because I'm great big and you're scrawny doesn't mean you, I'm going to carry your stuff. Hey, you'll be carrying my stuff if you combat me grab me up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we all have the same hit die and basically yes. the same character sheet, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, uh, I have 63 HP. How much do you have? 63 HP. <laughs> oh. oh. Sounds 51. Like we, sounds like... We both have 18 con. <laughs> Would be my guess. Con. How do I have more hit points than you? That's weird. I don't know. Mm. Math is funny. I mean, I have yet to take that fighter multi-class thing that gives me even more HP yet, so hey. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. Uh, so, as y'all unload up into your... Uh, position into your rooms uh, we'll call it two gold for the night because this is a your choices are of an in I see demand gotcha. has skyrocketed also actually I have 68 hit points I did not calculate my HP again after the level 5 increase so I'm good uh, stuff here we go we did it yeah <laughs> Is but, it two gold uh, a piece, or is it two gold for uh, uh, like two gold a piece? Oh lord! Okay, that so puts us down six gold. When when they first bring that up, uh, can oh. I make a perception check to see if there is anything in their inn that is broken? Uh, you're looking to uh, work off part of that for the group, yes. basically. Uh. Sure, if you uh, are able to... Okay, give me a... What uh, skill set are you looking to use? Uh, right now, I was specifically looking into fixing things because I have the quick repair skill. So, okay. like... Yeah, okay. Uh, give me a... Give me a roll. For crafting... Wait yes. till wait till Lillian gets to level fifteen, and the quick repair skill means she fixes it in two seconds. Yes. Oh man, that's broken. Hold up. Oop, done. Yeah. Blech. Uh. Well, I will say that was a critical success because I was figuring fifteen because you know it's not if it was all that important. They would have someone else do it. So uh, they'll knock three gold off of off for the party. Okay, that so, is definitely a fifty percent reduction. A, yeah, there we go. Uh, you end up spending uh, into uh, so, and they'll only charge you a silver for supper. Uh, for those who eat, I'm assuming, uh, Tommy, you're on bread and water. Bread and water, all day, every day. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So, uh, for you, it's only a couple of coppers. Okay, fair. Am I out of bread from Caliphus then? Uh, probably. Boo. All right, fair enough. <laughs> 
well, if memory serves, y'all didn't buy rations. Yeah, no, we bought it to, I think we did buy rations, yeah. I don't remember. I think most of the non that was purchased yeah. was to ward against vampires. <laughs> <laughs> not to be consumed. So that's a thing yeah. that we did. I mean, oh. y'all could have just been munching on garlic this entire time. We don't know. <laughs> just yeah. enough breath okay. weapon to kill all the vampires <laughs> in this stuff. <sighs> Lawless. Yes. So, uh, anything else y'all are looking to do tonight before turning in? Um, not really. There's, we have a very clear, like, we need to be at Castle Cronquist in 22 days or we are super dead. So there's not a whole lot of, like, side exploration unless, like, short of the House of the Second Breath getting old of Salem Guard. I've, I've got a thing i got to do. Okay. If this wasn't Ustalov, quite frankly, I might consider just busting through the night and getting there a little faster. Like, going in shifts. Everybody sleeping, like get a real wagon and someone make the ride check on a loop and we just haul. And I don't want to travel in the night where vampires and werewolves are. That seems bad. Yeah, it's almost like the GM prepared for that. Yeah, right. <laughs> what is the current phase of the moon? Also, that's a relevant uh, question. Oh, God, yes. Yeah, well, I'm strangely enough, you're going to learn here in a moment. Oh, good. Oh, wonderful. I'm so happy I remembered to ask. Oh, good. Question. Uh, yes. I'm going to presume that since clubs are free, we can all have at least three stakes on us. I'm just going to put those in my inventory. Thank you very much. Clubs are, in fact, free. Uh, my fighter yeah. in the level one of Doomsday Dawn just rolled in with a club. As oh, yeah, because he had to spend all of his money on armor. <laughs> yeah. Remember. Hey, there's a reason why thump and sticks still work. Accurate. Amen. Uh, so later that night. Uh, but real talk, what is the current? Rate? What is the current? Uh, before I go to bed, what is the current phase of the moon? Uh, you're going to find out here in about five seconds i know but if it's actually a full moon i would like to prep for that before i go to bed because i think it's pretty common knowledge that that means where uh, it's, it's, it's almost full like a sliver under full like it probably will be full in the next day or two okay got it okay so no further precautions other than the normal locking the door then. If it was a full moon, it'd be an entirely different story. But it's not. Not the 99% oh. werewolves! <laughs> uh, so... That night, as you were sleeping, there is a loud knock at your door. <sighs> and this will happen. This will happen to all of you. Okay. Uh, everybody, give me a. Okay, uh, everyone but Ross, give me a d6. Oh, good. Oh, interesting. Good. Oh, great. Look, I rolled a five. That means I'm the fifth to die. <laughs> I'm guessing. Josh! We'll die together. Congratulations, Levi. You win. You die okay. <laughs> uh... Or I okay. lose. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, uh... Lillian, there's a knock at your door in the middle of the night. Yes. Man, you were brave. Yes. Please, the master summons. Might I ask why? You little ones have a new friend. And you hear a slight giggle in the voice. So that is time to put armor on and get the sword. Because, I don't know, 
new friend sounds like someone who wants to kill me. Or wants to put a second collar on top of us. When you're done with that, go over here. You have 20 days. Both clocks are ticking at once. <laughs> All right. So I will prep up. And then I will open my door. You open the door and you see a, a somewhat perturbed looking pseudo dragon. It's tapping its tail impatiently on the banister, the rail that separates the loft area where the rooms are from the uh, stairs downward. Man, I did not see that coming. <laughs> I am not going to survive playing a, a, a grumpy ass character if this is the sort of route we're going with everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm interrogating children. You want to stab first? We're so dead. The deadest. <laughs> no, I meant more so as in I won't be able to contain my sort of like... <gasps> oh, I'm sorry. You won't be able to contain the squee. <laughs> it's so cute. Goblin the bomb. Yeah. Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> With you. Yes, yes, miss. Downstairs now. Now, please. The master... And his friend are down there, and you'll meet another one just like you. Isn't it so fun to be you? At which point it flaps off downstairs. <sighs> uh, Trick question. Yes. <laughs> I uh, slowly walk downstairs before I actually turn around the corner. I want to take an extra second to uh, listen in. Okay. You hear additional knocking and movement. Okay. Give me a perception check. Uh, it's not bad. Okay. As you look at uh, Selimgar's room, there is a small wheeled construct knocking at the door. Hmm. It looks over at you, waves, and continues knocking. And it's speaking uh, I know languages are a thing in this new mm -hmm. meta. So mm -hmm. uh, if you, it sounds very much like it's speaking in a language that sounds very much like the chants you've heard from Silumgar as he practices his movements. Oh, neat. I have a friend. I've got a robot friend. <laughs> and further you see a a young halfling who you would recognize as one of the serving the one of the servers from downstairs gotcha. knocking on the door saying uh sir please uh you're wanted downstairs so Okay, so here's a uh, perception check. I guess I'm going to keep playing paranoid. Someone is suddenly speaking Vudrani, and they're, we're in the middle of nowhere. What is the population of Hyannis, roughly? Like, small town? Uh, my... I would say, since there are a good number of mines in the area, we're talking maybe 5,000 people. Okay, sure. So it's it's very much, you know, the mines are the lifeblood of this area. Suddenly we're adventuring in Pennsylvania. But all right, here we go. Here's a perception check to sense motive. It's a 25. Does the person sound like they're actually from the homeland? 
the voice you hear is has very flat affect. Honored sir, the creator requests your presence downstairs. So as you open the door, you look down and you see a brass and steel and other strange items that are a living construct. A living construct as in like it is alive, it has like a pulse, a heartbeat, or like... Uh, you see various... It's pumping their there are billows that are moving. There are springs that, you know, it, it is a, I would say it's more of a sentient machine. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. So um, I guess I'll try to identify that with, what even identifies that? We don't have engineering anymore. Um, mm, uh, mm. Well, I, as you look at it, it says, oh, thank you very much, honored sir. The cre it bows slightly. The creator requests your presence downstairs. Quickly, please. And it walks over towards where the where a halfling boy is knocking at another door. Okay. Is Lillian still in the hall as I come out? After I checked for the other stuff, I was wanting to walk start walking down the steps. Uh, I'll say that you know, none of this is being subtle. Okay. So, uh, I I would say that yes, y'all would see each other. Okay. Okay. So I'm just gonna I see Lillian and just throw my eyebrows as high up in the air as I can, just like a, in her direction and mm. shoulder shrug. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm gonna roll for it. I don't know exactly what I would do in this situation. If it's greater than 50, it is greater than 50. Okay, so Salem Gar is going to go to Dale's door and, uh, okay. as the halfling boy is banging on him, to be like, Dale, it's okay. No one is here to assassinate us. This time. This time. <laughs> this halfling child looks safe. I'm learning. Uh, Dale will slightly crack open the door and be like, what do you want? You want us downstairs, my friend. Uh, y y yes, sir. Uh, the, 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 no, man, the, the, Oh, for God's sakes, you... little one, just say what you gotta say and be done with it. Uh, please come downstairs, sir. All right, now get out of my way before I toss you down the stairs. Yes, sir. <laughs> and it's gone. Uh, give me a perception check. Okay. Uh, Josh. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. That was a 20. Uh, as the halfling boy leaves, you're looking down at a two foot tall, small mechanical being. Uh, just momentarily, it it's like it it's like you've seen this some of the same style of of work before but as that thought runs through your head it looks up and says hmm, you didn't necessarily have to be that way and it turns and rolls on wheels to follow the young man down the stairs with thump 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 and about this point the pseudo dragon flies up from below doing backflips and circles saying gentlemen if you would not mind lady as well please please i have better places to be than here don't we all 
<laughs> I'm still hung up on the fact the little dude's got wheels and he went down the stairs. Thump, thump, indeed. Whoa, poor guy. Sealem Guard is going to go gear out before That makes you wonder how he got up the stairs. He's a transformer. Anyway, I'll go jam my bracers on, grab... Uh, I don't really carry that much or anything, but have all of my stuff and just, like, get with Dale and Lillian and okay. we should probably go together. I don't know what this is, but... Uh, we don't apparently have we have a new friend. Universal. Uh, everyone... Uh, with the exception of Ross, make perception check. It, if it helps at the moment, you're unconscious. I think you're so. much. <clears throat> I thought I was unconscious. Like, wait, what? I'm dreaming about robots. Good, good. Yeah. You are definitely seeing flashes of light and uh hear the sounds of tools working downstairs. Ratcheting type sounds, some scraping. Uh, Josh, you would hear low murmurs as well. Well... I don't know to make it any of that. Mm. The pseudo dragon flies up, sits on the railing, impatiently taps its tail on the railing and says, Really? I have better places to be. Then go, little one. Where I... is it you would like to go? Why can't you go? Because the master has to be here until you get downstairs. Who is your master? Oh, goodness. The pseudo dragon puts its paws over its heart and just falls backwards. And it's one of those clear, I am wounded with disgust by your ignorance. I suppose we should go downstairs and meet whoever it is. Indeed. I mean, it's either that or we try to enslave the pseudo dragon in these constructs and sell them for profit. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I and I say that out loud. Yeah. Oh my god. I can't say I think that very wise, but regardless. Dale, Dale got woken up in the middle of his sleep. He's not. He, he's thinking pissed off. Yeah. As as uh, as one of my favorite characters from Steven Universe, Connie Marishawan, would say, I'm thinking mad. <laughs> so as y'all reach the stairs, you're above the common area below. And you notice all the people who had uh, there were only three or other four other people staying in the inn and they were basically sleeping downstairs in that area by the hearth they are all jammed up into one corner as far away from the table in the center of the room there are several but this table is in the center of the room. Uh, perception checks, please. And so it was. For a grumpy guy who just woke up, uh, Dale, you are the most perceptive. <laughs> yeah, Dale doesn't need coffee. His anger fuels him. <laughs> You see angry. <laughs> uh, okay, Tommy. You notice there's a person on the table with two people beside him. Not again. Uh, uh, sorry, Lillian. You, rec you recognize the 
uh, some of the sigils being traced over the uh, person as various signs from Thessalonian rune magic as the person's fingers glow. We're in danger. <laughs> and Josh, you, Dale sees that you recognize both of the people downstairs. Oh, you do not recognize a large man with, uh, well, you actually do recognize him. Part of the reason the people are in the corner is there is a large half ogre with a really big axe. You've seen that axe before. And you've seen the two people downstairs. One's the artificer and one's the magister from the throne room. Oh, okay. Uh, and about that. So seeing and, this, I'm going to all pretense of I've been awoken by some impudent robot thing is going to drop. Assuming I recognize these guys, I'm just going to... Um, hmm, I don't know if I necessarily want to run up and just go, Oh, hi, how are you? But some kind of something. Mm. Uh, as y'all start down the stairs, uh, you the glows start to fade. And... The pseudo dragon lands on the magister's shoulder, facing you, and politely taps its claw on top of the head of the magister, saying, Master, they're here. The magister turns around. He looks tired, he looks unhappy. These are things you do not need perception checks for. You have a grumpy, high-level wizard in front of you. Gotcha. Oh, uh, and at this point, uh, Ross, you're starting to wake up. As your eyes open, you realize that you are laying on some sort of table. And the last thing you remember was seeing a paladin with a big mace swinging at your head. All right, look. Also, why in all you like the sing the funny carols to get your powers and shit? I don't know what happened. I took a simple job. Yeah. He all ain't the paladin. I say, just kind of looking around. The, at the statement, a simple job. The fourth a, wall breaks. No, <laughs> hard. <laughs> Everyone just looks at the camera. Just. <laughs> A gnome who is on one side of you just st suddenly starts laughing as he walks around your feet and walks up next to the wizard. About the time he reaches there, the construct and the pseudo, the pseudo dragon is still on his master's shoulder, the construct rolls up to the feet of the artificer, and you hear in common, ready to go, creator. The wizard looks at the looks at you, says, explain to him. Slashes a finger through the air, a door opens in the fabric of space and time they step through and are gone <sighs> all of them yes all of them uh i muttered something in left. 
I just mutter several things in Orcish before sitting up. Yeah, Sengar oh, is also doing in Vudrani. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh. You would recognize it feels like there's something around your neck, kind of where a gorget would be. I ain't, I ain't new to collars. <laughs> It doesn't feel bad. That's a first. It's a pleasant first, but that's a first. <laughs> It'll only feel bad if you get more than a mile away from a thing. I have watched the first episode. <laughs> yeah, where we almost kill ourselves in the first 30 minutes. <laughs> I was more impressed with how long it took you to figure out how to get garlic. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. And yeah. just all of the rolls and and the the candy giving, I did get that far too. Mm. Just <laughs> good. Part of me thinks that my character is just going to be here to be the common sense one. You mean chaotic neutral? Uh -oh. Half orc is the common sense. So, I uh, I assume you sit up on the table or get down from the table. I get off the table. Just kind of look around, look over in um, uh, the group's direction of the people that were told to explain. Kind of lick my lips a bit. Well, I think you can explain whatever the heck that fellow wanted over some drinks. Now, uh, is that too much of a well, let's is that an agreeable it, statement? Let's keep it simple. You've got a collar on your neck that will either cut your head off if you decide you want to tamper it with your fingers or if you try to use magic it will explode and your head will fall to the floor basically we have a chest we have to take it to castle conquest within 22 days or we die in that case the person there's a person waiting at castle conquest to get these collars off of us and to receive the chest and the story we've got a route We've got so many days to do it. That's pretty much it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go get some breakfast and get rid of this damn headache I've got. How much sleep did we get, Jason? Uh, it's, uh, it's probably about 3.30, 4 in the morning. It, you've had, it's, call it an hour to an hour and a half before sunrise. Okay. So, it's not luckily it's in the summer of the year so sun rises early mm -hmm. and well, I, have to, uh, I have to imagine Selimgar would be a character who gets up pretty early to like morning kata practice yeah yeah we used to have that morning and night so this is probably not that big a deal so just I'll walk over to the new guy and just well my friend what he said is true Despite oh, his I... gruffness. Uh, and on one of the benches of the table, you find all of your gear. Including my good pipe? Laying on top of your backpack. I just grab the pipe, put some tobacco in it. Well, looks like I ain't going to be going anywhere pleasant quite some time. So how about you get into this whole explaining business and then we can get about getting these damn things off us huh of course of course you see i was on uh, oh hold on oh we're gonna do it exactly like we did mute in in greenwich colonies here is a deception check oh but druid no <laughs> oh my god it was good times you see i am i am going to magdimar and as we travel to califas i was stopped by the same individual who has found you and well, against our wishes, we carry a box for him. Due north to Castle Cronquist. And my friend, as he so eloquently put it, yes, if we do not reach there in 22, we have been on the road for eight days, you see. 22 more days, if we do not reach there, then I'll just kind of put my hands next to my head, just like, as hands go out to imply explosions. All I really want to do is get to Magnemar. You rid of this whole thing, but unfortunately, the gods do not allow us to make our own decisions. Extending a hand. My name is Silumgar. 
Tim Suri. Suruk, I say, very noticeably, not shaking his hand when he mentions the gods part. Oh, and are you accepting his statement at face value, or would you... So he doesn't roll. Um, yeah. The 15 oh. is over his perception DC, which, oh, based yeah. on the proficiency system... And yeah, just, it doesn't beat my perception yeah, DC. Unless he dumped his wisdom, I didn't beat it. Yeah. Uh, my perception's plus 8. Right. That's close. <laughs> so, you know, uh, you get the idea that he's not telling the whole story, but uh, it, you know, it's just one of those things. You know, how often do you see a uh, human wearing a mask, a Vudrani? gentleman talking to you and a elven lady and I assume everyone's going to start their day at this point um, I don't see why not yeah Selimgar will if Saruk doesn't take my hand Selimgar will just simply like, like take it back and put it like fist into palm into about just, I'm sorry forgive me I will take you up on your offer of drink but give me 45 minutes and I'm going to go back up to my room and start stretching for the morning workout. And then after like which, I'll begin. I'm just going to like watch him walk up and then look over at the elven woman and just go, I'll take a urine on this whole mess too, from the fact you ain't. And I just point to the people cowering in the corner. I will also tap the collar on my throat. Indeed. Hmm. At at this point, the folks who were in the corner have started to move again. Uh, one of the young ones mutters something about a witch, at which point uh, his parent, his mother, cuffs him on the back of the head, tells him to mind his manners and keep his mouth shut. And they, uh, yeah, they all basically stay in that same corner. They're just not as, uh, they're not squeezing in, they're just huddled in. Okay. Evidently oh. getting woken up by a strange gnome, a very powerful wizard, and a half-ogre is disturbing to some people. I mean, the ironic part is that when we found out that that's why we were being woken up, it's like, oh, okay, this is a lot better than I thought. Got it. <laughs> like, it was calming. Saruk was just more so happy to be alive at that point, so he's just going to nod and shake his head till he can get his bearings. And uh, you feel fine. So uh, you evidently have received magical healing while unconscious. Fair enough. So uh, the innkeeper and his family uh, get y'all's meals together. I assume y'all just go through the normal process looking to leave fairly close to first light? Mm -hmm. That would be the idea. Okay. Uh, actually, that... actually, 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 actually. Uh, Selimgar would propose to the party since tomorrow night is the night of the full moon, we may be better off staying another day in Hyannis somewhere safer lest we be because it looks like it's going to be a long long time on the map before we get anywhere civilized and if we get caught out in the open by a wear something or other well it 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 would not 
be impossible for you to uh, get in the near area of the Monastery of the Vale okay. in the next day or two. Okay. The scary part is the or two. Yeah. The scarier oh. part might actually be do we know I know it's like well and truly on a map that like humans can see but given that that's if I remember correctly from what Josh said, that's a uh, is a temple of Norgaber. Do we know that exists? Do like do the common people? Are we aware? Uh, yes, commoners would be aware of uh, yeah. Let okay. Me, In that let case, me scroll up. Uh, yeah, if you want to. Well, like a religion check? You know, uh, actually, society. Also good. Can do. Boom. 25. Uh, as things have gone on, and since Joss mentioned it, you would now know that Bishop Yasmardin Senir, uh, what is the bishop of the monastery? Uh, Instead of following Ferasma like <laughs> most people uh, in this area, it's it tends to be the way that uh, the third son tends to go into takes oaths of devotion to Ferasma. Uh, he ended up uh, choosing to follow Norgerber. So. Uh, it so basically, uh, yeah, he took took over the monastery and uh, and rededicated it to a different deity. Pre pretty much. Yeah. Uh, so it, uh, yes, it's well known. Uh, they're not known to be evil. Okay, so this, this is more not. of uh, and let me, I literally just made this video, which comes out tomorrow if you want to learn more about Norgerber on BDG. Yeah. Here is a religion check. It's 14. I do not know what the Reaper of Reputation is. I feel a thank you is in order for that. You're welcome! Oh, wait, <laughs> hold on. That may have been Never mind. In any, in any case, yes, it is coming out tomorrow for you. You request it, but also, for sure, I don't know nothing about Norgerber. But if you you think either way, you're probably going to have to spend one night in the open before you reach. The monastery of the Vale, and am I cor And that is one of the places y'all specified on your itinerary. That is definitely a place that Dale wants to go. One night in the open seems pretty unsafe. See them guard would definitely just, <coughs> especially on the directly full moon. Yeah, no, I would much rather stay another night here. Short of like, if someone was playing a rogue druid, maybe we'd give it a go. But. Uh, mm. Mm, the last thing we need to do is get ourselves caught out in the open by aware something or other. As much as I want combat. <laughs> and also not rather not get tore apart by a pack of werewolves. Okay. Like I said, it just from the moon, you're not sure whether Tomorrow is going to be full moon or the day after. Okay, fair. So here's so, a nature check then. I suppose it would be. Yeah. In a world nature. where we're all playing rogues. All nature sounds like a fun check to me. Trained in all the skills. Bam! 15. To determine Let me double check. how long for the full moon. Yeah, that should be pretty easy uh full moon is well wow. tomorrow 
and <laughs> in exact, in exactly, and the moon will be at its highest in exactly twenty-two hours, thirty-two minutes, and eight seconds. Okay. Uh-huh. So, in addition to uh, wanting to stay in Hyannis one more night, then Selimgar might also propose we all bunk in the same room and sleep in shifts. <laughs> because, well, well, hang on. Let's. Mm. I might recommend that just to pay less money. Also true. What uh, what check is it to know more about werewolves? Nature again? Yeah, I would. Okay. Nature. Guys, we should leave right or... now. It's fine. Dude, werewolves don't exist. What is this, a fantasy setting? Uh, <laughs> uh, I, w- I would say that you two, after being in Caiaphas and in Thrushmore, uh, have you're really thinking that all this stuff about werewolves, you know, uh, please pass me another two silver sheen, you know, that, you know, these people are just, you know, going through the motions. It's probably not that bad. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this looks like maybe I should hope that I get lucky again. Yeah. A 13 ought to at least be like, no, dude, you're wrong. They're here. They yeah. will eat us. No! <laughs> Man, Leah and I are going to go hang out. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and make a roll for a cult. And- okay, I, yeah, I can see it. <laughs> It was glorious. It makes sense that the that the one that's native to these lands actually kind of goes like, "Why? What are you two talking about?" Uh, Okay, (laughs) Josh, there's no question in your mind that this that werewolves are real. And that tomorrow night, the night of the full moon, is their strongest time. So they are actually forced out of whatever shape they have inhabited into a hybrid state. And are, for all intents and purposes, affected by an enlarged spell. So not only are they half-wolf monsters, they are large half-wolf monsters. Well, Dale, th- well, Dale thinks that uh, two things. One, uh, Dale, th- Dale doesn't necessarily think that werewolves are have to be evil. This could be an opportunity. And two, he ain't afraid of no wolves. You would also know that during this time, they are... My god, that's so good, you're right. Sorry, I'm not trying to metagame. I went and looked at it in the best, Jerry. Get a free and large person on the night of the full moon. What? That's so good. Darn it. If only more of you had rolled like Levi. Yeah, everyone fumbles. Dude, werewolves don't exist. Come on, werebears are all lawful good. We got this. Off we go. That's actually worse for us, actually, given the nature of most of the party. <laughs> but Mahogany, you are firmly convinced that any any werewolf, you have enough smell off of the garlic, they're going to run away from you. Oh, if no. <laughs> no. If you want to... Between that and some of the cinnamon y'all have. What cinnamon? You make the level of I don't know why it challenge. matters, but it does, because yeah. that one. Yeah. I yes. believe it matters. Yes. <laughs> no, but what cinnamon do we have? Oh right, the spices. Right. Yes. Well I don't I don't know about the spices. Yeah. So what cinnamon do we have? Yeah. <laughs> oh we had to transport a fancy box, not the spices. 
probably know the fancy box has spices in it okay so i guess the now it comes down to yeah. how, how well does a 13 pull it off because we have two people who don't believe they exist one person who firmly believes they exist and a isn't afraid of them b would like to negotiate with them and then new guy dot 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 I feel like I, I have. I feel like I should get at least a bit of an advantage because I lived yes. in this country my entire life. Uh, bonus points also. I don't know match. if Jason will run it that way, but bonus points also, Ross, for playing a half orc in Ustalov. As someone who's going to be running carrying crown pretty soon, that's literally hard mode is to play an orc or a half orc, given how much the orcs have come over from Belkson and raided. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's kind of why my character is. Yeah. Well done. Good. Uh. What do you think I have survival as expert? Mm, fair. Ooh, yeah. Nice. Uh, now I'm much less worried I'll, about werewolves. I'll, we can make it through here. <laughs> we good. Yeah, you... You... You, given your background, definitely know that the night of the full moon is not a good night time to be out in the wilds. Mm-hmm. Uh, because... Werewolves uh, are, they're driven mad by the full moon. Right. You know. You know. Right, I guess I'll just kind of, as they're all kind of just saying this, and I'm just like, no, werewolves are real. You you folk don't seem to understand Iguata's. No, they're not. Look. I'm not certain about the whole logistics of it. I ain't certain about the execs of it. But I've lived in this country my whole life, unlike the rest of you all, which is painfully obvious, may I add. But there is one thing that anyone that's ever lived in Ustalov knows. You don't go outside, and you certainly don't camp on the road on a full moon. That's sun in your own death warrant. Call in all. A fair point. Well, in any case, we certainly cannot split up, because if one of us gets too far away from the box, again... Fuck it, I'll take my chances with the box before I take it out there and not with the full moon. I agree. Hmm. Lillian, Dale? Well, we are ahead of schedule. That being said, even though we be in a town... Shit gets crazy on the nights of a full moon, so it's probably in our best interest to... Well... Oi! Barkeep! I say just kind of try and draw his attention. Uh, y- yes, sir. The halfling family that owns the inn. God, they are everywhere! Yes. <laughs> 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 Look, I ain't, yes, gonna but... ask, I ain't gonna tell you how to run your establishment, but I presume you have a faint clue as to what tomorrow night is? It, y- yes. Here. Uh, he, points, he points over to the wall where silvered iron grates are stacked up against the wall. They look to be just about the perfect size to fit in the windows. I ain't gonna lie to you. That ain't going to work 100% of the time. At the very least, it'll prevent them from coming in that direction for a few minutes. These these have worked well in the past, sir. As long as my family is on this one, we have not had an attack inside other than from someone who is inside. Hey, frown. Is that person still with us? No, sir. Not at all. Well, whatever gods there are, at least let that poor bloke rest. That ain't a pretty way to go. Well, I don't think a lot of us here, or at the very least I know I ain't going to be leaving tonight, so I don't know. I'm pretty handy with a blade, so if there's anything I can do in order maybe to sell my services for protection and not in case something bad does happen, I'll be more than willing to do it. Uh, yes. Uh, 
whatever that was that brought you here, sir, if all of y'all are willing, uh, your room tomorrow night will be free if you help provide security for this building. Let me just look to the rest of the group. That's fair enough. You got a deal. <laughs> deal girl, not... yeah. Good enough for me. <laughs> now the question is this. Are we gonna get is all we gonna get werewolves or are we gonna get some more exotic tonight? Is it just gonna lean back? <clears throat> uh Actually, sir, we we really haven't had that much trouble here in town. Uh, up in the mines, uh, Black Annie is her own. And he kind of stops himself. Yeah. If you want to know more, ask me during the sunlight. I am not speaking more of her. And you hear, no, I'm just, and, no, I understand that. And you hear uh, a muttered witch and the sound of someone spitting on the floor. Huh. The corner where the family was. Uh, mm. So at this point, I will say that the sun is up. Uh, Levi, you are still perfectly convinced that a little bit of garlic, a little bit of cinnamon, put in water and let it bubble on top of a candle in a pot and Y'all could paint yourself with bacon and run through the wilds and werewolves wouldn't come within a mile of you. But, other... but it's not worth going out on my own and having my head blow off. Yeah. I'm so... actually going <clears> to... <throat> At one point through the day, I'd actually like to see if I could lift the crate. Uh, what's your strength? 16. Yeah, you can, 16, if I remember the uh, numbers correctly, you should be able, if it was all you were carrying, you could probably carry it without feeling more than <clears throat> moderate encumbrance. Oh, probably, yeah. possibly even light. Oh, she's nice. You know, like, one part through the day when you guys show me the box, I'm just going to pick it up and go... Argh! All right, um, well then, it looks like worst case scenario if we need to ditch the horse or something. I can't carry it, but I won't be able to fight or do much more with it. He's better than nothing. Yeah. How did you look it around before you got it caught? Forgive me for saying this, but y'all look like you some weak folk. And you would not be wrong. Looking at my biceps, which are much smaller than Saruk's, clearly. Well, let's just say it was a failure to communicate. Uh, there was a man in Caliphas who eventually helped us. Uh, it, it was a rocky beginning, but such as it is. Yeah, from the little interactions I've had from you, you ain't exactly a, a charismatic individual who just oozing with natural charisma. Well, I am very far from. And in case you, in case you couldn't understand that, that was an insult. Not so charismatic <laughs> yourself. When all the eight, I never said I was. All the eight Chaw characters get together. Oh wait, this isn't Legacy Pathfinder. I'm actually twelve Chaw. I'm actually twelve Chaw. Same. Same. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like we all increased that at fifth. Uh, mine was more so for the um, uh, intimidation. Yeah, same. 
God, it's almost like since we're all playing the exact same class, only with slight variations, we're all going to have very similar play styles. More or less, yeah. I had imagined I'd do a lot more sneaky deception things than I am, but I think that's more of a function of my rolling badly. In any case... Mm. I literally built a thug, so you know. Fair. Yeah. Well, I will say uh, y'all have the day to do what you want, anything y'all want to do. I would hmm. imagine fortify the inn. Okay. Uh, and since I know can, yeah. next to nothing about werewolves, I just... Suruk, we should fortify our position. What is it we should do? You're obviously much more knowledgeable than we are. Mm, that's because I've been close to one too many of them. You kind of get used to it around here, but once again, it's a numbers game. If you want to live, you tend to stick together, just like them. The only advantage we have is that they're quadri- they're driven literally mad. Hmm. Oh. The... Well, let's just hope we don't even meet the other top. But... The long story short, if we want to keep ourselves safe, anything and everything silver is going to be our friend, which seems so barkeep himself is already a bit on that one with them greats and whatnot. Uh, for the most part, Lillian has been making us quite a bit of silver sheen, perhaps, and All looking right. over at Lillian, she could help our new friend out. Ah, uh, I suppose I could. I mean, I got money. I only got like six gold pieces left, but I got money. It's fair. Let's see. Either way, though, we still got to deal with them. Silver's probably our best bet. And then, with them creatures being large and everything. It's probably in our best option to also try and make it so that way they have to push through things. Cover up small openings and things of that lock. That way they can't reach through it and try to grab us. Make sure there ain't any holes in the roof. So like a barricade. Now, are there any big pieces of furniture in the room that perhaps could be pushed in front of a door? Uh, yes, when uh, once it comes time and y'all help fortify, you notice that there are locks, places to actually set these grates into the stones of the wall okay. and lock them in place. And there appears to be a way to do this with the, a large grate over the entry door as well. So there's little like nice. grooves in the like in the floor where the grate sits yeah. in. Nice. Okay, yes. cool. Uh, okay. It, it's fairly clear this is not their first rodeo. Okay. Yeah. So that's every window, every door, everything's been covered. Uh there is a grate for everything. Okay. So sometime during the day, I am going to uh, brew up a uh, garlic cinnamon potion. (laughs) Roll me craft alchemy, please. Profession. And I have my little kit and everything. It's I'm going to be so good at making this work with this thing. All right, here we go. Look at that 25 on making something worthless. For what it is. (laughs) What are you doing? The... The smell is hideous. <laughs> Why, yes. It, it, it is. It, 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 you've almost managed to create skunk scent. You know what? You know, this I might think that actually accurate, yeah. help against werewolves. What in the. What are you making over there? Uh, I'm an alchemist, just trust it. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Just keep looking at her like, no, that's not how this works. You're wasting I'm just advantage. gonna walk away and go back to what I was doing. As a, as a man who has worked in several Italian restaurants in his day, I know what garlic and cinnamon smells like together. I wouldn't necessarily call it stunk, but I guess I've never oh, brewed it Ah, together. but you didn't do a 25 craft alchemy check to Accurate. make it. Accurate. Yes. I am putting it in a pot over a candle, and Lord only knows what's yeah. in the pot so, or what makes up the pot. So at this point, you probably just have it set over by the hearth. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Uh, what What are you even making that for? Uh, I will just shake my head as clearly these people don't understand werewolves. <laughs> uh, oh, this is painful. <laughs> Perception checks, people. Deal. Oh, oh, definitely. I am assuming I have made a will. Oh, perfect. Good. Well done. <laughs> oh, for Pete's sake. <laughs> Tommy and Josh. Tommy rolled. Tommy got a 22. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. Josh on the other hand. Uh, ah, 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 boo. Mm, while the two of them are discussing the relative merits of having this, both of you would be able to hear quietly in the back the voices of the family who owns the inn. The mother of the family is saying, Dear Lord, what is that? That smell, it's terrible. Dear, dear, I guess it's something they learned. I, I guess this is something that maybe they do wherever they come from for Thing for werewolves, but why garlic? Oh, wait, <laughs> wait a second. We're suddenly getting very suspicious. Of wait a second. Yep, you know. I don't know. Wait anything, a second. I'm not rolling anything. <laughs> what? What? Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay. Please, Tommy. Please. Okay. Please what? Please tell us. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely uh, just kind of turn and be like, they do not seem to like that. I, I, Lillian, I don't think that's going to do anything. Yeah, because it smells like a skunk shat itself and then proceeded to roll in it and marinate itself in the sun for the past four days. It's awful. Then it smells as it should. <laughs> you elves have some weird freaking cologne, you know that? I suppose it would keep things away from us. If nothing. Yes. But, but what, what does it look like again? Vampires? As you mentioned, they don't like garlic. I'm going to walk over, grab a clove of garlic, and kind of just take a bite out of it. And just chew it up a bit. And then I'm going to look to them and say, here, I'll, I'll go test this out. And then I'll walk back to talk to the family. The... As you go into the back, the you can tell that as they're working in the kitchen there in the back, you know, occasionally they're just pausing, putting their hands over their faces. It's kind of like, it stinks out there. What is yeah, that, that, that will be the elf. Okay. <laughs> Great big eyes is 
he turns around to look at you up there. Uh, but something the matter? For, for the love of Erasmo, why? She thinks it does something to the werewolves. I don't know about the werewolves, but but my I haven't smelled anything that bad since my first year of marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Roll me a reflex save. Okay, um, um that's dangerous. Um uh Okay, well, this is where I'm going to do that. No, just, uh, just Saruk. Just Saruk. 19? I mean, <laughs> Misses. A large metal spoon comes flying through the air, nearly hitting both you and the father. If you say one more thing about my cooking, it wasn't my fault, you <laughs> And this is clearly heard by everyone else in the front. Soon girl's eyebrows are just going to go real high up in the air. I'm just going to mm. take another bite of the garlic clove. Just kind of munch a bit. Okay. Yeah, well, I think we've gotten it mostly set up. Oh, when the elves are not looking, I'll get rid of that for all of us. For all of us, six. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Don't but, worry. I was planning on getting a flask to make a like holy no! water throwable. <laughs> no. And thus, the first stink bomb on Kalorian was created. <laughs> you know <sighs> what? <laughs> For that roll, uh, are you going to bottle it? I was planning on at least making one bottle. Okay. Oh my god. I will rule it to be have the same mechanical effect as gas stretch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Nice. We've done it. So once it percolates a little bit, it will be as strong as an undead thing's throw up. Good, uh, good. I think I just made a new potion. What was in that pot before you added the garlic and cinnamon? Uh, things to make silver sheen, holy water. Uh, probably a variety of other. Oh yeah, there was some centipede poison. Um. <laughs> Wow. Okay. It, with all, it wasn't just garlic and cinnamon. It was other things she threw in as well. Very pungent. So, oh my god, that doesn't exist in the playtest yet. But in legacy, in legacy path, yeah, that nauseates you for around. Yeah, that's that, fair. I, I'm gonna call it from the equivalent transferred over from Legacy Pathfinder. All right, because enough. a 25 craft alchemy check, it's with the intent of this will stink to keep the werewolves away. Even... <laughs> I'm assuming there's some rotting meat mixed in somewhere. <laughs> okay. Just, just... Yeah, it, it's... Whatever happened... <laughs> It's that, and you put a couple pinches of sulfur, and the just natural something. coal dust floating in the air. Ooh. Yes, yeah. I've just, written down this recipe. Uh, I, I the GM suddenly yeah. regrets everything. <laughs> no, I, this. This was, I will call it, a reasonable it was a happy stroke accident. of genius. Yes, fair. That's quite fair. You have done very well on your crafting checks. You've invented the toothpaste tube. And Wait, now... what? Okay, I can see that one. Toothpaste silver sheen? 
No, oh yes, yes, God. yes, indeed. Oh my god. And now you have made the first stink bomb, which near as I can tell ought to be to one to one it uh something along the lines of slowed two for a round and then sick three after on uh the well I mean the alchemist made it, so the alchemist's class DC. That sounds pretty rough overall. Which is that's Exactly yeah. what it would I mean, in Legacy Pathfinder. Three, yeah. In Nas or yeah, in yeah. Legacy Pathfinder, nauseated means all you had was a move action. You lost everything else because you're too busy actively vomiting. So that you'd have to lose yeah. two actions to convert it over here. And then sickened for three rounds is different than now the sick condition. But I mean, same idea. Yeah. I I'll trim a little bit off of that. Uh I'll I'll just go uh second two. Okay. So that you know it's not quite as good as the full supernatural distilled from the essence of undead thing. Mm -hmm. But hey. It, it, for not having undead things to boil in the pot you did pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So. You're going to see this potion again. I'm sorry, guys. No, you're not. I will learn to tolerate it. It's going to work. No, let's, and you're going to see a werewolf vomiting after I hit it with one of these. Yeah, here's the like, thing. Oh, here, I guess here, it works on werewolves. Here's the thing. Dale is all for that plan because we can bottle it and sell it. Also true. Oh we my. literally did just invent a new alchemist thing. And <laughs> shoot, if we can if we can make yeah. it smell nice, uh, you know, instead, then maybe we come up with the first cologne. Boom, we did it. It's true. I've got pungent per. I've got pungent potions. I just need to make them good. Just do the opposite. <laughs> what is the opposite of cinnamon and garlic? Vampire I and I don't know what the opposite of cinnamon is. Uh, vanilla Sorry. and onion. Damn it, Josh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but that sounds worse to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's pass time till the night comes, because I can't really think of anything yeah. else to do. Uh, anything yeah, I can think of to do is about this witch person. Yeah, yeah, you know. Might be worth asking about. What you would be able to gain is that uh, the there was a witch that was killed in this town and basically they burned her body and dumped it in the bottom of a coal mine and now people are saying that she's coming back as a greenish kind of ghostly thing every so often at night so they would recommend you not spend the night by the uh by the uh, coal mines. How close are we to the coal mines? Uh, admittedly, this was Black Aggie was born, you know, was burned 40 years ago. Hmm. But still, the screeching laugh and broken teeth of the witch Black Aggie still haunts the nightmares of the villagers. But are we really close to the coal mine in this inn? Sure. Uh, no. Uh, Just werewolves tonight, not ghosts too. Yeah, I would say that is pretty pretty reasonable. Okay. To well, I suppose the I feel like it's it's weird for this party. Well, it's weird in general. But it's better for this party rather than in this case. I think the common room is the most defensible should something go sideways. Given that all four of us want to have a flank, we actually need more room than less to make a bottleneck because we want to be able to maneuver around and stuff. Eh, I don't need a flank. Good. Happy for you, Mr. Combat Grab. I need a flank because I'll get forceful when I'm flanking. Okay. So we just pass the time till the end of the day and just like 
I would definitely definitely ask we sleep in shifts as I imagine is practice out here. At least on the night of the full moon. Yeah, it might also uh how many halflings run this tavern? How many of them are there? Uh all told the family has uh about twenty people. There are about twenty halflings <clears throat> and various groupings. Okay. And so, they all have it, like a safe place I don't to be think somewhere. you have enough candy for them all, Tommy. I don't. I do <laughs> not. Oh, and I uh when you chose this in earlier the the day, uh one of the half works that were from the barges uh came in and you did hear a lot of whispered uh it you were it was suggested not only because it's the only inn it's also a pretty good inn so uh the ferryman free frequent it uh they've used the time to go back down river because uh, with the way the current flows, they can make it quite a bit further. Sure. Just like the second half of our trip will be a lot faster once we get over the mountains. Yes. So, but when they came in for a early breakfast lunch, there was a uh, little bit of a conversation and the father and the family have been eyeing you a little bit warily well good that means there's more people i have to brutally murder once this is over with every half work present copy <sighs> excluded <Give me> <laughs> i had to catch myself there real quick i was about to say excuse me I don't work for Ross, okay. he's going to save all our lives at some point or another. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's accurate. Still the main reason to take that to take that range okay. thing. Mm. Okay. Now, <clears throat> unfortunately, the map I have <clears throat> is not the best. It we was just to mind it. So, <laughs> there's been a little bit of doctoring going on. Yeah. So, uh, first questions is anyone going to uh, any other preparations? Yeah, I got nothing. So, I'll have, I mean, how have much silver sheen do silver we sheen. have in total? I'm sorry? How much silver sheen do we have in total? Oh, goodness. What? I I'm pretty we... sure I made over 20. I think that's right. The, the number 21 came to mind. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. I remember the blackjack jokes. You're right. Okay, so I'm going to take five of them. Yeah. Okay. In, in the handy dandy squeeze bottle. Yeah, in the handy dandy squeeze bottle so I can put them on Don't my Don't they last for like a minute after you apply them? For the uh, next hour. Oh, never mind. Oh, hour. never mind. I was thinking single use item. Nice. Okay. I was like, I thought these were a little. little more useful than those are quite good they weren't your little potent crystals that just smashed as you smashed them they're not trinkets no well that was still pretty good tech i thought to just buy no, a bunch no, of it potency made sense. crystals I'm just so that i could have my plus one armor this is much okay. better though okay so i'll just we shall prepare okay i'm gonna grab okay. five of silver sheen as well I mean, you should, I, I guess, over the course of if it lasts that long. If a combat lasts that many rounds, because literally one dose of Silver Sheen will make us all good for an hour. So it's just that's everyone's first all, action. All of us. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Just everyone has a readied action to when the first wear whatever shows up. We all just <laughs> Silver Sheen. I was just going to shove him up against the wall and shank him, but that works. As the re moon reaches its highest point, 
you hear the howls as werewolves and a wolf pack attack the town. Nolan, it tends to happen around here, my ass. As it takes about 30, 40 minutes, then you hear the bars and the windows and the doors being tested. Of course, you know, initially they're just howls of anger and outrage, but soon you hear let always you hear that window give way which one uh oh gotcha and this large beast pushes through into the room okay and you hear these two at these respective windows well that's not working as well as it could yeah it'll be fine and, and you hear the great here shaking but after it's one of those shake Arr! then a moment later it shakes again but you're not hearing anything else okay okay so action stations you have one through and you have two beginning there beginning trying to come through other windows gotcha So does that make it Lillian cool. first then? Uh, by yes, it would be Lillian first. Okay. Action one. Silver Sheen, my nice and sharp rapier. Action two. Move right there. So just right up next to the first one. Like so? Uh, I was gonna, I have a little dot on a space that's like ah, one lower. Tally. I'm gonna see. Got it. Uh, time to attempt the good old stibity stab while it is flat-footed, because rogue. Because rogue. The only class that you're flat-footed against in play test on the first round. Okay. Well... <laughs> <laughs> that's a number mm. and may I say once again I hate it when y'all roll good <laughs> so... I'm sorry okay <laughs> so that's so... 2d6 plus 4d6 that's so 6d6 plus your mod twice because this precision... is a deadly d8 weapon and an extra oh god oh it is doesn't that it? put all of my base damage up to d8s and deadly add a d8? deadly does not that's fatal deadly just adds an extra d8 on top yeah. okay but so... precision damage is added to the weapons damage so like that's all multiplied oh yeah we multiply precision damage or we multiply precision okay. damage now so i'm starting off it is a plus one rape here okay so that's 2d6. I have 2d6 sneak attack, so that's 4d6. Doubled. 8d6. 8d6 plus 1d8. Plus double your mom. Plus 8. <laughs> yeah. Whoo! Okay. 8d6 plus 1d8 plus 8. That's a lot of dice for level 5. That is. Oh, and it was flat footed, so its AC was lower, and I nat 20 with a. Uh... Okay. Boom! 
with a yeah. silvered weapon. Okay. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm no, not. No, no. <laughs> Number five. I think that's just under triple his hit points. <laughs> uh, no. That takes him down from his initial hit point total. You hurt him. But he's not dead. Oh my, okay. Fair enough. Now, one thing to note is... That's uh, a benchmark. Yeah, that is. Whew. I thought they were definitely super dead. And if I understand it right, most of the things in the playtest, it's not like damage reduction that's only broke by a silver weapon. Rather, it should have some kind of like weakness. It says weakness silver 10. So he took 10 extra damage. Okay. Was that if being a crit would that increase that? I don't think so. Okay. I'm going to say no. I think it's a like uh, the, this value here doesn't see all of the math. The math hits this value and then does 10 more. Yeah. Okay. That's and legit. I, and I am using the stats for the werewolf fighter in the playtest. This is a creature level three. Okay. So then follow up. And I feel like I'm cheating, but. Oh, oh, never mind. I lied. I was looking at his armor class and thought he had 18 hit points. <laughs> never mind. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Well, it the number right below that. Why, yes. Why, yes, you are correct. Yes, yes. Okay. Why are you even looking at the BCRE while we're fighting? That's just rude. I mean, I just want to make sure everything gets played right because it's yeah, a playtest and a new GM. I'm and, not trying and, to cheat. And I don't have a problem with that given that... Uh, just given that. Okay. So. So. Ooh. So. Wait a and second. I'm good. And. After like 53 damage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Selimgar. I'll draw an X. One stride puts me here. And I'm going to, with my silvered wolf stance, I'm going to try to do the same. Walk up to this guy, chanting mantras in Vudrani. I try to punch him 22. Uh, which is over his AC of 18. And not quite a crit. But we did a thing. So, okay. So that means... Oh, uh, God. Oh, this character sheet's kind of small. So I hit him for this much plus this much precision. So... And then 10 more on top. So 25 damage, all told. 25 damage, all told. Actually, wait. Hold on. I lied. I did not uh, uh, add 4 to that. <laughs> I have a modifier. So 29 damage. So 29 damage. Mm -hmm. Well. Well. Maybe this is the better way to do it. Nice. Dun, dun, dun. Rest in peace, Wolfie. So Selimgar walks up just like... I imagine all of my attacks as like Mortal Kombat 10 x-rays just walk up chanting in Vujrani as it's being stabbed and it recoils just kind of reach up and stab back. And then for my second action, because now he's at dying two, I will attempt to strike again. His armor class is now six lower. Because he okay, has so. a minus four conditional and a minus two circumstance. And that was a huge waste because I don't actually yeah. roll the dice, but that would, that's a critical hit. So it would move him to die in four and dead. Yep. Yep. You, there's a comment about dead like Rover, but <laughs> uh, we'll just leave that where it is. And now I need to roll. Okay. 
And that so, will be all. Now I need to roll some dice. Let's move that to there. And OK. And <clears throat> plus four. Hmm. Well, all right. yeah. well, party, I need to apologize. I had scouts warning and didn't use it. Oh, oh well, it'd be fine. It, it's okay when the when the uh, window and shutters and s silver grate were flung into the room. You uh, got the idea. Yeah. Warning enough. So, uh, so, uh, I haven't gotten your name down yet. Josh. Saruk. Uh, Saruk. It's your turn. Um, well, uh, so it seems like the next ones, from what I can gather, that are going to bust in are the ones at the top, right? Uh, you you've heard them attacking you you've heard them going after those windows and the grate it, and the over towards the main entrance i'll move up here oh okay. for one action move up over here and then in case i haven't stated it already i'm going to put some silver shine on my sword Okay. And I'm going to look to um, uh, um Tommy, what's your character's name again? <laughs> it's named after a magic card, Selimgar. I'm going to look over to Selim. Selim, take care of the door with Dale. I got this. Selimgar will nod. As he's recovering from like snap neck, come down, throat punch. Stand up as you nod, continue the mantras, turn in the direction of the door. Okay. Is it ironic that you're killing werewolves in a wolf stance? Kind of, yes. Why didn't I take Tiger? Well, because the wolf is forceful, and if we happen to level, then I can get Fatal D12. But that's a different story. I mean, if you could have Tiger, you could have been Sagat all day. Tiger up again? <laughs> Fair. Okay. So next is you. You hear this window begin to give. Okay, back to you, Dale. Okay, so I think what uh, would you try to say is I need to go away from the door. No, I think he wants us to watch the door. Watch the door, right. <laughs> So, so I'm going to take an action to quickly open the door, uh, step out, uh, fire a shot with my short bow, and then close back the door. That's the idea. Okay. Uh, open door. Open door, gonna, strike, you can, close door. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say you can do that, though you are shooting through a grate. So they would have, so, uh, for screening, it's a yeah. plus one to AC. Yeah. That's what I'll go with. Yep, yeah, you can yep, do that. That's okay. I'll take that. I'll take that chance. Okay. I'm going to say you're approximately there when you take your shot. So 
Dice be good to me. This is a plus nine. That does, does hit. not hit. That wouldn't hit because of the plus one. Because they're at yeah. minus two to us right now. Oh, no, they've acted. Never mind. I lied. Proceed. Yeah. Okay. That was worth a shot. <laughs> I'll close the door back. Again, the puns. <laughs> it is what we do. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. And back to you, Lillian. Hmm. I don't hmm. have my Okay, good. Double checking, I didn't have myself muted. No, nope. I imagine so we're I imagine waiting. Lillian could go here. Because shooting an arrow through it is one thing, but stabbing a rapier through the bars to hit this square on the other side seems to be another. That's a fair point. Like, can I see it through the grates there? Effectively? You know it's there because it's slamming against... It's hitting the grate and the uh, wooden shutters. Gotcha. So maybe I will move over and prepare a stab. So, like uh, here or further north. Thinking maybe over off to the side. So yeah, something like that. Okay. So that way it can't directly see me, and then it breaks through finally, and then I stab it in the kidneys. Seems good. That works. Uh, next up is Silumgar. I think if I end up here, I end up with 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. I can get to the other side of the room in two strides. So yeah, I'm going to do the same. For one action, I will stride to this square, and then for two actions, I will ready a strike for when that thing comes through. Okay. Gotta think like rogues, get that flank. Yep. Mm. You want here or one further over? I wanted to... Uh, if I'm one further over, is it going to come in? It would come in like through these squares would be what it yes. occupies. Okay, yeah. Then, yes, indeed. The square I'm at now is the square I want. Spend two actions to ready one, strike, and pass. Okay. <laughs> and you hear further battering of wood. Uh, Saruk. Saruk. I, I, Saruk. Nearly said, I nearly said cheers in Gaelic to you, but <laughs> <Sponches>. <laughs> so can I Saruk. get that guy through the window? Like, can I hit him with my sword through the window, or is that uh, if you open the shutter on your side, you could. You could stab through the grate at him. All right, then. I'm going to march over to the window and just kind of, like, knock it open for, okay. like, my movement action. And then for my first strike, I'm going to make a combat grab, which adds an enchantment to it, which basically hit or miss. It's going to be a... Um, uh, it's going to be interesting. So this is a short sword plus one. So that's plus ten overall. Oh, is that, a, is that a crit failure? Yeah. That is a fumble. Uh, There's nothing I can do to re-roll it either, can I? Mm -mm. No, unfortunately. No. So, what did you get for uh, a halfling? 
Even the halfling couldn't reroll it until ninth. I have lucky halfling right yeah. now, but I can only reroll skill checks and saves. Okay. So, uh. how I'm trying to. Okay. I will say as you go to. You fling it open, and as you move to try to grab and stat, as you move to grab, you stick your arm out to try to reach him, and he catches you, not the other way around. And he pulls you into the grate. So you try to grab his arm, he grabs you and pulls you forward into the grate. Give me a let's see how much are we going to say it does yeah I you take d4 plus 4 eight damage. you take 8 damage And that's your <coughs> second action. Actually, technically, it would be his third because we have to use an action in combat to oh. or shut things. Yep. So uh, there you is. There you is. Did he just take the damage from like running into the wall? Uh, no. Well, uh, I. To me, that is. I used it based off of a melee attack for claw. Okay, fair enough. Gotcha. So, so basically, no, he didn't get a full swipe, but between the claws going in and pulling him into the into the wall, makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, we're going to roll plus four again, 16, okay. This window is making really loud sounds. You, it's knocking the it's knocking the shutter back further and further each time. Okay. Okay. And with the way legendary skills work in the playtest, with legendary crafting, like we literally would have an invincible fortress here because you just yeah. repair <laughs> over and over again. Okay. Okay. So uh, next is going to be is going to be him up here. So he has, I'm assuming he has three actions. Mm -hmm. So he has you by the arm. He is going to go for a yeah, he's going to go for one bite, a claw, and attempt to pull you through the deal, which I'll say is a strength check at a negative two. Yeah, actually, actually, what it, what it is, is it's an athletic, not to contradict you, but it's an athletics oh. check with a negative on it. it. It includes the multiple attack penalty. So he'd be athletics okay. minus one, basically. Okay. And as I see, this is why it's good to play with people, because that makes it a lot better. Ouch. Minus one. Yeah, because he his athletics is plus nine, and then he would take a minus 10 on it. So it'd just be d20 minus one, assuming it's his third action. Okay. You know what? That's pretty low. 
he he would make it would make more sense to him since he has the arm to first to, pull then to to pull twice and then bite the arm okay because if he can pull him out then he can savage him makes sense so 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 what you do is you make an athletics check over uh, i have the rule book open hang on yeah. skills athletics to move a dude skill description athletics to he's technically already grappled him uh i guess to to disarm him no that was a bad pun to i guess to shove him basically yeah so you're making a athletics check against saruk's fort dc okay. and you have nine So, versus a nine. D twenty plus nine versus whatever Sarukh's for at DC is probably something like seventeen, eighteen. Okay, eighteen actually. Okay, well. so <laughs> that pulls, but there's also a grade in the way. So I'm... on the success, you. This is for shove, but it's as close as we have. Yeah. You push your opponent away five feet. You can move five feet in the same direction as your opponent. Uh, so if there's a grate in the way, I imagine he just like, I don't know. Your call. Uh, I will call it a strength again. And this time he manages to use you to pull the grate out forward. Uh. So, yeah. And since he got you out, uh, that's going to be first that I'm going to say First is to grab to pull you up against the bar. Second is to pull the bars out using you. Mm -hmm. So he has one attack left. And he's going to go for a bite. Which would be, assuming That's that fine. the second attack had to be something with the attack trait, and I think it would, it would be d20 minus one, yeah. So... Uh, does a seven go over your armor class? I imagine that fumbles. That's a fumble. Which is a fumble? The seven, the, because it is ten the, under. In the place has ten under. Oh, it's a fumble 15 and under. ten over. Oh. Well, at okay, least so ten. That's, you know a, what I mean. that's a that's a critical failure. Right. Yeah. Just like you uh, rolled a one. You are no longer held, and you can be, I will say, you are free and clear and there. No, actually, I'll say there. So you will start the next turn on his rear quarter. Okay. Okay, uh, Dale. <coughs> Dale is going to give another try at what he tried before because the, the wolves outside, excuse me, as far as he knows, have not tried to move. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I will say this you're going to have to reload the bow. That takes zero actions because it's not a crossbow. Oh, it's a zero? Yeah. That's okay. a short bow. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. You open the door, pop out. It counts as partial cover for them. And go ahead and take a shot. 
Mm. Does not Man, hit. I'm so mediocre right now. Where, right. Where's the high rolls I was getting earlier? You've left them behind forever. I mean, at the, at, I mean, it's not hurting me at all to do that. Hey, I mean, you didn't I, fumble. You know, it's better than just standing by the door and doing nothing. So, right. Okay. And I'm going to say, what is our? Okay. So. Okay. Okay. So there ends that round. Going to move him up here a little closer for you. And Lillian, back to you. So now let's top of the initiative. I hate to be a stick in the mud, but it is after nine and I need to get up in the morning. So I have to be that guy and call it here. Thank you guys so much for watching on Twitch. Thank you guys for watching on YouTube. We'll be back next week to go save Ross because he's outside. I'm fine. Be... Fine. We won't save you. I'm an evil character. I don't want to save you. Anyway. I need to be happy. Yeah. I'll talk to you guys more, I guess, and we'll kill them all next time. Yeah. Bye bye. Yeah. And we'll skin them and, and sell them for profit. Yes. <laughs> right, I wonder what you can do with werewolf video. blood. I already said bye-bye. It, yeah, it's over. The episode's over. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.